Hello, John Talley here with Partzilla.com. Our 2009 YFZ 450 Har has a bit of a problem. Out on the trail, sunk it in water, now she doesn't have compression. So, what do we need to do? Let's go ahead and get the plastics out of the way, get the fuel tank up and gone, pull the head and get down to that cylinder, because I bet it probably compressed down on the rings. That's what's causing it not to have compression. So, let me go grab my whole toolbox and we'll start doing this. So, let's go. All right guys, this portion of the project is only going to be a skill level two, but you still need to pay attention to everything because putting it back together, guess what? That is gonna be a three. That being said, let's go over some of the tools you're gonna need to get this thing pulled apart. On the ratchet side, you wanna get a quarter inch, a three eighths, and then a breaker bar. Have several extensions, whether they be three eighths or quarter inch. On the socket side, pretty short list couple of eight millimeters, a 10, 12, 14, and a 17. If you've got your regular old spark plug socket, it's not gonna fit in there unless it is a thin wall. On the Allen side, you wanna use a three, four, five, six, eight, and then this big guy, a 14 millimeter. On the plier side, set of needle nose, set of just channel locks, side cutters, regular old flat blade screwdrivers, soft blow hammer, 14 millimeter wrench, be nice to have this little magnet pick up here and then a pick tool. Now, as far as the parts list, well, that's to be determined. But what you do wanna do is reference our exploded parts diagrams. That's gonna give you a very clear picture of how things are gonna come apart. So, once you've got all your tools and your diagrams together, we can go over there and show you how to do it. So, let's go. Step number one, when you're about to do an engine job, disconnect your battery. Because as you're going through this, if you were to Drop a wrench in the wrong place, may make contact with the live section of your, your wiring, and we don't want that. So, what do we need to do? Well, we're gonna pull off all the plastics, we're gonna get the fuel tank out of the way, get the head off, and then get down to that cylinder. This hose may have pressure on it, so you wanna have a rag on it when you're pulling it off. As you're pulling this down, you wanna group all your nuts and bolts together. Put them in little plastic bags because it all seems simple right now but if it takes you a couple of days before you have to put it back together things start getting moved around that's when you start losing pieces and parts and it doesn't want to go back together correctly all right guys we've got our plastics off our fuel tanks out of the way let's go ahead and get the uh, radiator fluid drained out Unfortunately, you can't tell how deep water is by looking at just the surface, and this one actually got submerged out on the trail. So, what does that mean? Well, we drained the water out of the top end, flushed out the crankcase, she still didn't want to start. Turns out it doesn't have hardly any compression on it. So, what happened? More than likely, we're going to find that the compression caused it to push down on the rings, and now they're no longer sealing the cylinder. All right, let's go ahead and get the muffler off and then we'll get the head pipe after that. Nothing to it, just a couple of 12s in the back, then a 10 millimeter up here. Go put this in our bag. The exhaust bolts up here are just 12 millimeters. Mm-mm. That bottom one's frozen on a little bit. We're gonna spray some penetrating oil on there. We're gonna let that soak for a few minutes. While it's doing its thing, we'll go ahead and work on the, uh, the intake side. All right guys, the way I'm gonna approach the intake is to go ahead and remove the air box itself. Next, we wanna pull the, uh, this breather box off the side, then disconnect the throttle body from the, uh, the intake boot on the side of the cylinder and just slide it back. That should get it out of the way enough for us to go ahead and remove the head and the cylinder. Now, we can loosen up the intake boot on the front side of the throttle body. There she goes. Now, let's see if the penetrating fluid has done its job. Eh, huh. You gotta love it when something works right. All right, let's go ahead and get our front radiator hose off. It's just a simple clamp. Once you pull that out of the way, you usually have to kind of break the seal, so to speak. So grab the rubber and just shake it a little bit. You hear it make this crunching sound, then you should be able to pull it back. 
Next, I want to go ahead and get their breather hose out of the way. It's got a couple of different points where it mounts to the head and down at the uh, side of the, uh, the crankcase. And then get one more clamp down at the bottom. That way we can just remove it. All right, guys, here's where Yamaha gets a little tricky. You know, this is a 16 millimeter or 5 8 socket, but if you just have a Craftsman one like I do, guess what? It's not going to go down in there. So, Motion Pro makes a thin wall spark plug remover, which we just happen to carry. So, you may want to pick up one of these. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to get down in there to pull it out. Hmm, it's wet. Imagine that. <laughs> All right, we're going to go ahead and finish getting these cable harness holders out of the way. Go ahead and remove that, uh, that top motor mount. It actually has a 8 millimeter Allen on this side, 14 millimeter uh, nut on the other side. Once we get that bolt pulled through, then we'll pull these two top ones and that'll get the bracket out of the way. Yeah, it fooled me a little bit. I can see where it's got the nut on the side of the bracket but it looks like it's actually welded on there. I would imagine that they did that so you could actually hold the threads because there was a fair amount of torque there and it, you know, it could shear away from the bracket potentially. All right, it looks like to get it to clear, I need to actually pull off the intake clamp because it was hitting it. There we go. So there's what I was talking about. They did weld a nut on the end of it. All right, now we can actually start bringing the engine apart. Let's uh, go ahead and get our valve cover off. I want to just go ahead and blow off any loose dirt because I don't want to drop anything down into it. And these are just two five millimeter Allens. Nice and clean in there. Our inspection covers over here at the crankshaft. The crankshaft bolt access actually has a 14 millimeter Allen and that way I can look at the cams and I want to bring it around to top dead center on the compression stroke. Don't lose your o-ring right here. Alright guys what we're looking for here we want to turn this counterclockwise and there's going to be a mark to that outside edge. We want to bring it around to that little indention on the side of the case and then we want to verify that we are actually on the compression stroke by looking at our cams. So let's start bringing it around. See if we can find that mark. There it is, that's that single mark. All right, we've got our crankshaft around to top dead center, but if you look up at the cams, these two little indentions, they're on the inside, so that means we're on the intake stroke. And if you look at the, the actual lobes, they are pushing down on the valves. The, so it's actually sitting at split overlap. So we need to go another 180 degrees, and that'll bring the cams around to the right position. There's the timing mark. There's top dead center. All right, now we've got a mark right there. Now, when you look at the, uh, the camshafts, those little indentions on the gears right here and here are even with the edge of the head. So we are on the compression stroke, top dead center. We can go and remove our tension adjuster for the cam chain. There's only two eight millimeter bolts. I'd do the inside one first because there's actually a spring that's pushing against it. So you can take it out by hand, and then the one on the outside, a little bit easier to get to. All right, there it is. Now we just need to bag it back up. A little bit of preparation now makes all the difference later. And one note, there was actually a crush washer on the inside bolt. So keep that in mind. Let's start pulling out our cam carrier or cam caps, and then that way we can lift off the, uh, the timing chain. And all of those are just eight millimeter bolts. All right, that should be everybody. Let's go ahead and lift them off. There's the exhaust and the intake. Now, got enough slack on our chain. Should just be able to walk them right out. Be careful of these little half shims right here.
that's it. And these little half shims, see where they go in the bearing on the bottom, like that. All right, let's go ahead and pull these eight millimeters on the side, and then we're gonna go after uh, those main bolts. All right, guys, these are 14 millimeter bolts, and I guarantee you they're gonna have some torque on them. And we wanna take them out about a quarter turn at a time, and we wanna go crisscross pattern to relieve the tension on the head. About 90 degrees, going back and forth. All right, now she's loose. We'll go ahead and remove these, but then we'll need to go back with a magnet to get the, uh, the washers. All right, at this point, I just want to get a small soft blow hammer, go ahead and break it loose, and the head should just lift right off. There it is, and she's off. All right, we're down to the cylinder now. Let's go ahead and get that front chain guide out of the way. It just lifts out. Now we can go ahead and get our head gasket out of the way. You go ahead and pitch it because we're not going to be reusing that. Now there's just one eight millimeter bolt over on this side, and then we can lift off the cylinder. There it is. Yep, look at them. They won't even move. They are stuck in there. That is what happens when you sink one of these machines. So. Once again, you can't always judge how deep that little water section is from the surface. The connect rod actually feels good. So what we want to do next is go ahead and get uh, a couple of cloths down inside. So I don't want to drop anything inside the, uh, the crankcase. Then we'll go ahead and get the, uh, the clips pulled on the uh, connector rod end. Then we can get that piston out of there. And for that, I'm just going to use a pick tool. And you've got one little edge on the piston where you can actually get up behind it. And then just guide it out. And there it is. All right, now we can go ahead and push it through. And she's off. Well, all right, guys, there it is. She's torn all the way down. And that's going to do it for this video. So if you want to see how to put it back together, why don't you follow me over to the next video where I'm going to go through and inspect the cylinder, see if we're going to be able to reuse it or not. And then we're going to go through step by step on how to reassemble it, check the timing, check the valve clearance, and make sure it's ready for the trail. So we just want to say thanks for shopping here with us at Partzilla.com. And if you like what you're seeing, why don't you go ahead and subscribe to our channel, see what I'm doing next. So if you're ready, follow me over to the next video and let's see if we can get this put back together. So let's go.